What I have here is an operational amplifier, or op amp. So far, I've only used it in one project, a walkie-talkie, but op amps are super versatile components. They can be used as variable DAIN amplifiers, voltage comparators, oscillators, and in many other applications. So, clearly, it's a very useful component. But what if you're someone who repairs electronic circuit boards and you want to test an op amp? How would you go about doing that? One way is to check the input and output signals using an oscilloscope. In some cases, you'll also need a signal generator to feed signals into the circuit. But here's the problem. These tools are expensive, and not everyone has the knowledge to use them properly. So, what's the solution? I think a better approach would be to build a low-frequency oscillator using an op-amp and create a small test board where you can easily plug in and remove different op-amp ICs. This oscillator would be connected to an LED. If the LED blinks, we know the op-amp is working. But there's one more thing. There are many different types of op-amps available on the market. So I want to design this project in a way that it can at least test a few common models. Let's get into the design. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. More on them later. Let's take a closer look at the op amp. In circuit diagrams, it's usually represented by a triangle. It has three main terminals, a negative input, a positive input, and an output. It also has two additional pins for supplying power to the IC. To build an oscillator, we need to set up a circuit like this. Let's analyze how it works. When power is first applied to the circuit, the capacitor is initially uncharged. This pulls the negative input down to ground. Meanwhile, the positive input depends on the output voltage. Since it follows the output, the output jumps up toward the supply voltage. This causes the capacitor to start charging through this resistor. The capacitor keeps charging until the voltage at the negative input becomes equal to the voltage at the positive input. At that point, the voltage at the negative input becomes slightly higher. And the output suddenly drops. Now the capacitor begins to discharge and the voltage at the negative input falls. Once the positive input becomes higher again, the output flips back up and the whole process repeats. As a result, we get a continuous square wave signal at the output. So, what's the frequency of this oscillator? Assuming the two resistors used in the voltage divider are equal, the frequency can be calculated using this mathematical formula. Now, if the resistor values are different, the output signal becomes asymmetric. Plus, the frequency will be determined using a different formula. But to keep the video short, I won't go into that right now. Alright, let me set up the oscillator circuit. One of the most common op amps is the UA741, so we'll start with that chip. After calculating the resistor and capacitor values, I configured the circuit to oscillate at a frequency of 1 Hz. We ran into a problem, the oscillator isn't working. But the reason is actually pretty simple. The op amp needs a dual power supply. Normally, that means you'd need two adapters to power it properly. But there's an easier workaround. If you connect two resistors in series, you can use the middle point between them as the ground. That way, if you're using a 12 volts adapter, the op amp sees plus 6 volts and minus 6 volts across its power pins. And just like that, the circuit is working. It even works with a 7.4 volts power supply. Now, some op amps have a different configuration compared to the classic 741, because they actually contain two op amps inside a single chip. That means I'll need to design a separate tester for those kinds of ICs as well. As I mentioned earlier, I've already built oscillator circuits for dual op amp ICs like the LM833 and LM358. 
There is also another chip called the LM324, which includes four op amps. So yeah, we'll need to design for that one too. Okay, as you can see, this project now supports most common op amp types. Now I'm thinking about designing a proper PCB for it. I usually get help from a local manufacturer, but if you want higher quality for your PCB projects, I definitely recommend checking out PCBWay. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, a leading company in high-quality PCB manufacturing, but they don't stop there. PCBWay also offers CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, and sheet metal fabrication services. You can get an instant quote and start working with their team right away. For more info, check out their website. The link is right below this video. This is my first time using SMD components in a PCB project. I bought some solder paste for this, but I'm still using a regular soldering iron, so I had to make it work with what I have. The result isn't super professional, and I did run into a few issues, but the project is still moving forward. So here's how it turned out. Unfortunately, this LED is in working because there was a broken connection right here, but I managed to fix it. Thanks so much for sticking with me until the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. I'll be back soon with more.